So we're here in the office with Dan Simons, someone you might have heard of because in many Introduction to Psychology lectures there's this video of a gorilla walking through a group of people and people don't notice this gorilla. Um, you might have even read this book and if you haven't then I'd highly recommend you do where he describes this type of research. But this is not what I'm going to talk about today because Dan Simons is also together with Alex Holcomb and Jennifer Tackett, an editor at Perspectives on Psychological Science where they have this new article format. So then, there's this new type of research that's published. It's known as a registered replication report. Yes. And people do research, but it's a little bit different than a normal journal paper. Yeah, it's very much different than a normal journal article. So in a normal journal article, people will run their one or two studies or three studies, they'll compile them into a package, and then they'll submit that as a publication. What a registered replication report is designed to do is to estimate the size and robustness and reliability and consistency of an important finding. So what we do is we find a finding that's already been published in the literature, one that has been cited many times or talked about in the media, that is really influential in the field or in the public, and we design a protocol to directly replicate that study, so to do the same thing again. Hmm. And we take that design, build out the protocol, write out the scripts, and then we put out a call for other labs that want to join in this project. And they each will then replicate the original study using exactly the same protocol. So we have anywhere from 10 to 30 labs mm -hmm. conducting the same study in the same way across a wide range of cultures and across a wide, wa wide range of subject populations. Okay. And what that allows us to do is to say, how consistent is this effect? We basically combine all of the results in a meta-analysis that allows us to say, what's the overall average effect of, for this original study mm -hmm. and how variable is it across all of these labs. So it sounds like the article is almost already written with this protocol perspective. There's already a lot of stuff and then you just collect, go and collect the data. Essentially, yeah. So when we design this, we have the study already designed. We can, in principle, write the entire manuscript in advance because yeah. we know what the theory is, we know what the history is, we know what the methods are. Okay. We build out these methods, labs go and conduct the study themselves, and then they Perfect. report their results in a standardized way. Okay, so why is it actually important to publish this new type of article? Well, one of the critical aspects of this sort of uh, re registered replication report is it does something that no other kind of article can do. So. Lots of studies have been published that are then replicated by one lab in a single study, mm. but any one study can't really be definitive. Mm. Any one study, unless it's amazingly large, yeah. one study is almost never compelling evidence that withstands all possible forms of variability and all sorts of problems of a sampling error. Mm -hmm. So what this study, this approach does is gives you a, an unbiased estimate of how big the effect is. Mm -hmm. And we only will do this for studies that have some doubt about how strong the effect is. Not that we expect them to not be there, but mm -hmm. there's only been one study, or it hasn't been directly replicated many times. Or there are a whole bunch of related studies that use different methods mm -hmm. that suggest similar things, but because only positive results tend to get published in the literature, we just don't know how reliable these sorts of effects are. Many of the originals were done with fairly small samples, which means we again don't have a great idea of how consistent and how big these effects are. So that's the broad goal. It does something that no other method can do mm -hmm. as robustly. Yeah. There, lots of replications are, are great and single replications are really useful. They provide more information. Mm -hmm. This provides a lot more consistent information using a vetted sort of evaluated protocol that makes sure we get it right. And of course it's certain it will appear in print. Exactly. So the results of every one of these studies are combined regardless of the outcome and they all get included in the paper so there's no publication bias. We don't have only the positive results appearing. We have all results from all of the studies and all of the participants in a single paper and all of the participants are authors on the paper. So what inspired you to become an editor uh, and to publish this type of article? So the idea for this sort of article uh, was something that my colleague Alex Holtem and I talked about many years ago. Mm -hmm. So in psychology there were a spate of prominent cases of fraud um, and that's not really directly relevant here. This replication or failure to replicate a study doesn't have anything to do with fraud. Um, but the combination of those pro high-profile fraud cases 
coupled with the failure to replicate some fairly prominent findings in the literature, as well as a bunch of findings appearing in the literature that lots of people would look at them and say, that just can't be. Hmm. Right? So we saw this as an issue of incentives. There's a really strong incentive to publish new novel findings and not as much of an incentive to make sure that these novel findings are robust okay. or to measure them precisely. Those incentives were lacking in the field and one of the things we wanted to do was to say, hey, let's take these findings that people are using in their research, that they're using to build theories, that they're using to make public policy. Let's take a look at these findings and say, are they robust? And we really hope they are but they just hadn't been tested. So oh. it was a need in the field. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much.